الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله وبالله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله آل الله أما بعد دي بيوز والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I'd like to welcome you back to this sixth episode on رسالة الحقوق here on Ahlul Bayt TV Islamic Lessons we have so far discussed the concept of rights. Risalatul Hukuq is the work of Imam al Sajjad, Salawatullah uh, Alayh, his, right his work on the rights, meaning the responsibilities that we have towards our fellow human beings and that we have towards our Creator and towards ourselves. We have discussed that the concept of rights in Islam is more um, befitting and we have said that it is not as we would understand it in an individualistic society, in an egoistic society. Rather, it aims towards creating equilibrium in society and equilibrium in one's own personal self, meaning creating a balance. If I have made sure to fulfill the rights of everyone else, then no one has to ask for their rights from me. We said that the greatest responsibility we have and the greatest right incumbent upon us is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the right that we worship Him mukhlisan with full sincerity. When we have done so, we now move towards the rights of the nafs. The nafs is the soul or the self. And when we take care of the rights of the nafs and the soul, we have to make sure that we transfer to every part and every limb of the body which is the place where the soul works, where the nafs works, that we deliver to every part its rights. So we said that the nafs, the operative system of this computer, this amazing hardware that Allah created, it is the operative system, the applications, are the anger, the lust, the desires, the input devices are the here is the hearing and the viewing the sight and of course the output device one of them we already discussed was the tongue and the tongue is the one of the most dangerous output devices in addition we have two more output devices that we want to talk about today the two output devices that we would like to focus upon is the hands and the legs now, before we go into this discussion, we need to mention, just as last time when we were talking about the sight and we were talking about the hearing, and we also mentioned the heart, we need to understand that these things are mentioned both in the physical sense but also in their metaphorical sense. I, in the physical sense, the hearing, the, sorry, the hearing, the uh, sight, we have to make use of them. But in the metaphorical sense, in the sense that they are used to take lessons, they are used to gain information, and they are used to uh, ponder with and to think with, especially the heart. In the same way, when we talk about the hand, we will come to see that we not only mean the physical hand, but we also mean the, uh, the, the spiritual hand. We mean metaphorical hand, and we will explain this. But we need to understand the importance of this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Yasin, He says, اليوم نختم على أفواههم. This day we have put a lock on their mouths. Normally when we speak, when we communicate, we would communicate with our mouths. On the day of judgment, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us questions, He will put us on account for what we have done. But our mouth will not reply. Our mouths will not reply. This day we have put a lock on your mouth. Now your mouth cannot speak. On this day, their mouths will not speak, but their legs and their hands will speak with us. Their legs will be witness to us what they did, and their hands will speak. What the, uh, they will speak to us. They will let us know what happened. They will let us know what they did. They will bear witness. So these things, the hands and the legs and our limbs will bear witness, and our tongues as well. Imam Sajjad says, وَأَمَّا حَقُّ يَدِكِ As for the rights of your hand, 
فأن لا تبسطها فأن لا تبسطها إلى ما لا يحل لك it is that you do not extend it do not extend your hand towards that which is not allowed for you property that is not yours something else which you have no right to go after do not extend your hands towards it فتنال بما فتنال بما تبسطها إليه من الله الأقوبة في الآجل because if you do you will be chastised by God in the future you will be chastised by God in the future ومن الناس بلسان اللائمة في العاجل not only will Allah punish you in the akhirah but in the present world the accusing tongue the person the accuser will accuse you in this world so you will lose out in this world and in the akhirah ولا ولا تقبضها مما افترض الله عليها ولكن توفرها ولكن توقرها بقبضها عن كثير مما يحل لها وبسطها الى كثير مما ليس عليها he says do not prevent it do not prevent your hands from performing what god has made obligatory for them certain acts have been made obligatory for the hands like in prayers and other things sadaqa zakat sadaqa is mustahab zakat is wajib khums is wajib do not prevent your hands from fulfilling these duties these religious duties that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told you to do rather you should honor your hands in such a way as to prevent them you should honor these hands in such a way that you prevent them from engaging in many of those things which are not allowed for them many actions are haram for the hands hitting innocent people stealing as we said other things which we would do in today's society which we would do Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says do not engage in them stop them and Imam Sajjad then teaches us that you should honor your hands you should honor your hands you should on the other hand let them engage in many deeds that are not harmful for them you should let them engage in many deeds that are not harmful for them فاذا هي قد اقلت وشرفت في العاجل وجب لها حسن الثواب في الاجل if you treat with them treat them with your aql and with honor meaning with your intelligence and if you treat them with honor in this world then in the akhira because of them you will get rewarded in the afterlife you will get rewarded because of treating them with honor in this world allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes his signs clear now what is the meaning of hand except for the physical hand what are the meaning of hands for example allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says tabbat yada abi lahab wa tab perishes perish the hands of abu lahab and may he perish as well tabbat yada abi lahab by these hands he has obtained and acquired punishment by these hands he has he has been uh, persecuting the prophet he has been denying the truth he has been worshiping idols he has been doing all these things that allah now says tabbat yada may the hands of abu lahab perish he also says what allah says wala tulqu bi aydikum ila tuhlaka ila tahluka do not let your hands lead you to destruction do not let these hands lead you to destruction i use them only for that which is good when we talk about power we say that power is in hands bi yadik al khair we say to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bi yadik al khair innaka ala kulli shay'in qadir in your hands is all good you have power of all, all things so goodness and power is in hands some jews in the surrounding of the prophet they used to say that the hands of god is tied up that he is not generous that he would not give free costly allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds in the quran he says wa qalati li yahud yad allah maghlula the jews those people around you they are saying that god's hands are tied غلت ايديهم ولعنوا بما قالوا الله سبحانه وتعالى ذا ريبلايز ذات ذي هاندز ار تايد اند ذي ار بين كاست فور وات ذي ار سينج بل يداه مبسوطتان ينفق كيف يشاء هيز هاندز ار وايد اوبن اند هي جيفز تو هو ايفر هي وانس ناثينج كان ستوب هيم 
وَلَا يَزِيدَنَّ كَثِيرًا مِنْ هُمَنْ We will give more to many of the human beings. مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ تُغْيَانًا وَكُفْرًا he gave, he, Nothing but revelation comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that will increase them. The revelation that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases them in rebellion and in kufr. So hands are used to denote goodness, hands are used to denote power, hands are used to denote generosity. وَاذْكُرْ عِبَادَنَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ وَإِسْحَاقُ وَيَأَقُوبُ أُولِي الْأَيْدِ وَالْأَبْصَارِ Allah says, make mention in the book. Make mention, وَذْكُرْ Mention our servants. Remember our servants. Ibrahim, وَإِسْحَاقُ وَيَأَقُوبُ أُولِي الْأَيْدِ وَالْأَبْصَارِ These were people with great power and vision. Insight. They have power, vision, and insight. On the other hand, now, because these hands can be used for generosity, these hands can be used for good, and these hands are the seat of power, these hands can also be used for bad things. For example, Allah says, ظَهَرَ الْفَسَادُ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ بَمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِي النَّاسِ In the lands, the uh, fasad has spread. In the lands, fasad has spread. Fasad meaning corruption has spread in the lands, mischief has spread in the lands and in the seas because of what the hands of men has acquired, because of what the man, hands of men have done. So that they should be given back some, they should be given a taste of what their deeds, of their previous deeds, the evil deeds. Because they did evil in the earth, now evil is befalling upon them. And we can see this happening today around the world. The human beings have been spreading mischief, both in the physical sense, in the sense that we have been uh, misusing the earth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and also in the spiritual sense that we have been spreading mischief. And now everything is turning back on human beings because of that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ Whenever an evil misfortune befalls upon you, it is because what you yourself have acquired, you have brought this upon yourselves. You have brought this upon yourselves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, these hands are used for generosity. We should spend with these hands. These hands are used for power. We should use them in Allah's way. These hands can be used to acquire good. And these hands can be used to acquire that which is evil. Our responsibility then is to use them only to, for that which is good and not for that which is bad. For example, in the story of uh, Habil and Qabil, when Qabil says to Habil that I am going to kill you, I will kill you. Habil re replies that I will not stretch out my hand to kill you. I will not stretch out my hand to kill you because Allah does not love the uh, Zalim. I'm afraid, I'm afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm afraid that Allah will punish me, so I will not stretch out my hand towards you. Meaning that I will not harm you unless you harm me. So we find uh, that the hands can be used for many things. Another example of the hand is when we give away our power or when we give loyalty. In bay'ah, when we give bay'ah, we place our hands in the person, in the hand of the person that we are giving bay'ah to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Fatih. He says, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَايَعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was happy, he was satisfied with the mu'mineen when they gave bay'ah to you under the tree. And he knew what was in their hearts, in the hearts of the believers, he knew what was there. When they gave bay'ah, he was happy. In the same surah, he says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُبَايَعُونَكَ Those people who come and give their bay'ah to you, those people who come and give their bay'ah to you, إِنَّمَا يُبَايَعُونَ اللَّهِ they're actually giving their bay'ah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَدُ اللَّهِ فَوْقَ أَيْدِيهِمْ The hand of Allah is upon their hands. فَمَنْ نَكَثَاقْ فَإِنَّمَا نَا يَنْكُثُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ Therefore, anyone who harms his own self, meaning anyone who breaks his oath, 
he breaks his oath for him, his own sake. He, anyone who harms, who tries to harm Allah, has only to harm him, his own self. Now, this example of the hand being used to give loyalty is used very beautifully by one of the poets, Khaja Muhyiddin Chisti, is reported to have said in uh, beautiful poetry that Shah Asta Hussein, Bad Shah Asta Hussein, the king is Hussein and the emperor is Hussein. Deen Asta Hussein, Deen Pana Asta Hussein. Hussein is the religion and Hussein is the protector of religion. Haqaq ibn, uh, sorry, Hussein is religion, Hussein is the protector of his religion. Sardad, he gave his head, he sacrificed his, his head. Nada das dar das yazid. Although he gave his head, he did not put his hand in the hand of Yazid. Sardad, nada das dar das yazid, haqaq ibn la ilaha asta Hussein. Because he gave his head, he sacrificed his head, but he withhold he withheld his hand from the hand of Yazid. Therefore, I, in a metaphorical sense, he did not give bay'ah to Yazid. He did not stretch out his hand towards that which is haram. Therefore, he is, became the very foundation of la ilaha illallah. Not that Imam Hussein is la ilaha illallah, but that the foundation of Islam now stands on the sacrifice of Imam Hussein. That much for the rights of the hand. Then we have to move on to the rights of the Legs. Imam Sajjad Salawatullah wa salamu alayhi also discusses this concept and he says, Wa amma haqqu rijalayk. As far as the rights of your feet or your legs is concerned. Fa an la tamshi bihima ila ma la yahillu lak. It is that you do not use these two legs to walk towards that which is not allowed for you. Certain things have been made haram for you, so do not. Walk towards that. وَلَا تَجْعَلْهُمَا مَطِيَّتَكَ فِي الطَّرِيقِ الْمُسْتَخِفَّةِ بِأَهْلِهَا فِيهَا You should not direct them towards that which will lead the person they carry to being debased. Sometimes we are going, we are doing certain things, we are going to certain places which will debase us. We will become humiliated. It is not worthy of us on being in those places. It is not worthy of a Shia of Amir al-Mu'mineen to be in that place. If alcohol is being served on a table, it is haram for us to be there, so we have to move away. If it is a place where those people gather which are gathering to hurt Islam, or which are gathering to fulfill the pleasures of the nafs without taking due consideration to the laws of Islam, we need to move away from there. We will be debased if we stay there. فَإِنَّهَا حَامِلَتُكَ they are your carriers. Your legs will carry you. وَسَالِكَةٌ بِكَ مَسْلَكَ الدِّينِ وَالسَّبْقُولَكِ They are your carriers and they will carry you in the direction of religion and they will help you go ahead. The legs will carry you towards the direction of religion. وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ The legs, there is no power except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, the legs can be used in the physical sense and in a metaphorical sense. Now, in the physical sense, the Imam says, make sure you do not use them in going towards that which is haram. You make sure you use them only towards going that which is halal. You make sure you use them. You make sure you use them only for that which will benefit you. You make sure that you do not become humiliated in the way you use them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then gives us some examples in the Quran on how we can use the legs in a metaphorical way, in the wrong way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوهُمْ مُبِينَ Do not follow the footsteps of shaitan. Do not follow the footsteps of shaitan. إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوهُمْ مُبِينَ He is an open enemy of yours. Shaitan is an open enemy of yours. Therefore, do not follow his footsteps. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنًا the servants of Allah are those who when they work, walk on the earth, they walk, they do so with humility, they do so humbly. They do not do so with proud. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another place commands us saying, وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحًا Do not walk in the, on the earth with insolence, with proud, with pride. إِنَّكَ لَن تَخْرِقَ الْأَرْضَ وَلَن تَبْلُغَ الْجِبَالَ تُولًا You cannot rent us under the earth. 
Sometimes when people walk, you think that they walk as if they are going to rent a sun or they own the place, they own the earth. How can you own anything when everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Therefore Allah says, do not walk in a prideful manner. Rather, you should walk with respect. You can never rent a sun of the earth, nor can you reach the mountains in their heights. Not that you cannot reach the mountains, but you will never become like the mountains. You will never be reach that height. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore has given us these advices. When it comes to how we should walk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also gives through Luqman. Luqman was that great, intelligent, wise person. And he says to his son, he gives advice to his son in the Quran. He says, do not swell thy cheek for pride, do not be proud, do not be arrogant towards human beings and do not walk in prideful manner, do not walk in insolence through the earth. Inna Allah la yuhibbu kulla mukhtal, Allah, mukhtalin fakhur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love every arrogant person and a boaster. And in the same sentence then, in the next sentence he continues saying, waqsid fi mashrika waqdud min sawtik, and when you walk, then walk moderately. Don't walk too quickly, don't walk too slowly. Make sure there is moderation in your walk and make sure that your voice has a um, pleasurable level. Do not scream too much, do not uh, cry out. Why? Indeed, the most despised of sounds is the sound of the donkey. Now, if you heard a donkey, you will understand what he is talking about. But the point being that you should walk on the earth with hum humility and humbleness, with moderation, not walking too quickly, not walking too slowly. Rather, Ibn Abbas says that we used to watch the Prophet walk and the walk of the Prophet was إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ بِمَشِيِّنْ عَاجِزٍ وَلَا كِسْلَهَانٍ When he would walk, he would not walk like a crippled person nor like a lazy person. He would be stern, he would, be, he would walk humbly but he would walk with moderation. He would walk with a firm decision on where he's going and not like a lazy person. Now, these are the examples of the legs when it comes to how to walk. What should we walk for? There is a difference between how to walk and what to walk for. The Prophet ﷺ gives many, many examples. For example, he says, وَمَنْ مَشِيَ إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ The one who walks towards the mosque. Then he will not pass through the earth, he will not pass through the uh, humidity and the earth and the dirt and everything, uh, except that the earth that uh, he is walking through will praise him and will pray for him. Another hadith says that the one who walks on the earth, and he does so to create disunity amongst Muslim brothers. In today's society, we need to take this very seriously. One who walks on the earth to create disunity and discord and fitna and facade amongst Muslims. Now, this doesn't mean that he's physically walking. Any state of being when you are engaging into something where you will be, where your words will lead to discord and your words will lead to disunity amongst people, especially amongst Muslim people. When your words will lead to this, Allah subhanahu the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, then kana fi Allah, this person is now in the anger of Allah. The anger of Allah surrounds him. And the la'ana of Allah surrounds him. In this world and in the akhirah. Not only that, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not allow him to see his face. To see Allah's face. Now when we say 
to see his face, we are not talking about his physical face, Allah does not have a physical face, but it is a manifestation of Allah's glory that the Quran speaks about that we will be able to see on the judgment day. This manifestation will be forbidden for the person who creates disunity amongst the Muslims, for the person who creates discord amongst the Muslims. He continues, وَمَنْ مَشِيَ فِي قَطِيعَةِ بَيْنَ إِثْنَيْنِ The one who walks, the one who engages in creating qatiyah, total split. The one who walks in creating and wants to create split between two Muslims. He wants to split them up. كَتَبَتْ عَلَيْهِ كُتِبَتْ عَلَيْهِ لَعَنَةُ اللَّهِ Then the la'na of Allah is written upon him. حَتَّى يَدْخُلَ جَهَنَّمْ Until that moment that he enters Jahannam. فيضعف له العذاب. Then the punishment will be doubled for him, multiplied for him. ومن مشي في عيب أخيه. The one who walks to expose his brother. وكشف عورته. And to expose his secrets. You might know something of your brother which is a secret of his. You might know something of a mu'min which no one else knows. Then you engage in this exposing him. When you engage in this act. كانت أول خطوة خطاها في جهنم. The first, the very first step he takes will be into hellfire. وكشفت عورته على رؤوس الخلائق. Then that person, that person who tried to expose someone else, whether this be true or not. I mean, when of course we said this earlier that if what you are trying to expose of someone else is true, that is one thing. That is a sin by itself. When it is not true. then it is an even greater sin. In any case, what we can see here from the examples that we have been mentioning is that when we walk or when we engage in something, we should engage in that which is good. We should avoid that which is haram. We should walk towards that which will benefit dunya and akhirah. We should not walk towards that which will benefit only dunya and will bring us harm to akhirah. The hadith, another hadith says, مشي المسلم في حاجة المسلم خير من سبعين طواف بالبيت الحرام. When a Muslim walks in to help his Muslim brother in need, this is better. This is better than walking. This is better than walking around the Kaaba seventy times, seventy times around the Kaaba. And the one who walks, the one who engages in helping his Muslim brother, كتب الله له عشر حسنات. Allah سبحانه وتعالى will write for him ten good deeds, and he will raise him on ten levels, and he will erase ten of his sins, and he will give he will give him ten shafaat, ten intercessions. So we see how the Imam has ordered us to use these legs and these hands only for that which is good, only for that which is halal, only for that which will benefit dunya and akhirah. These hands and these legs have been used in the Quran in a metaphorical way and they have been used in the in a physical way. They have been used in both ways and it is upon us, it is our duty to use them only and only in the best of ways, only for that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has approved of them to be used at and to avoid that which is haram. Just as a final reminder, one hadith reminds us that these legs, these legs are the very same legs that we will use to walk on the sirat. On the day of judgment, we will walk on the sirat and everyone will pass over that sirat, when we walk on that sirat with these legs, how we use them in this life will affect how easily we will pass or how, with what difficulty we will pass on the Day of Judgment. وَآخِرُ الدَّعْوَانَ عَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَى الْمُسَلِينَ عَلَى مُحَمْدٍ